Hey guys, welcome back to the Drain Gear Podcast by American Pipeline and Supplies for episode two. We're going to be talking about um, the barrier of entry for getting into lining. Um, I've heard a lot of you guys talking recently about, um, you know, I'm cleaning drains or I'm, you know, I'm doing this or that. I would love to get into lining, but I don't exactly know what I need, um, you know, wh- what kind of equipment do I need, what what training do I need, what materials, and most importantly, who do I buy it from, and how much is it going to cost me? So um, real quick today, we're going to go over kind of all of those topics to help you guys navigate that world. Um, there is a million different facets of it, uh, but hopefully today this is going to be very educational and informative. Uh, we kind of just want to run over everything with you guys to help you take that next step into the lining world. So we'll talk about um, identifying the potential jobs you may have, um, preparing your crew to get into the lining, the different types of lining. Um, Again, who do I buy from? The different types of equipment and the cost uh, associated with that. So, um, but I think, you know, one of the most important things um, is is identifying the potential jobs that the guys may have. Yeah. Um, Thanks for that intro, Elijah. Um, yeah, the, you know, there's so much opportunity as it pertains to trenchless. There's, there's a lot of variety when it comes to what those options are. And a lot of guys see that potential that aren't doing lining now. And they, they're kind of trying to figure out, you know, what do I, what's, what's the easiest step into this? And some guys wait and wait and wait for the right, you know, uh, jackpot job, right? Where they can, yeah. they find that opportunity, you know, big factory or, you know, whatever it may be, medical, medical place or whatever. And, and say, well, you know, this is going to pay for all my equipment and my training and all that to jump into it. And sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I would say that, you know, there, there are some baby steps that can be taken to get into lining. Um, it's kind of how I did it. Started patching first. And that kind of led into the longer liners. But yeah, um, guys that are drain cleaning, um, doing camera work, inspection work, there's massive potential. There's all kinds of opportunity left and right. You know, that yeah. just exposes itself all the time. So yeah, and our last, you know, our first podcast was about cameras, right? Why they're important. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's a huge part of identifying potential jobs. If you're cleaning drains um, and, you know, and you're digging up, pipe based off of, you know, root intrusion, whatever this and that. Um, if you have business coming in through that Avenue here, it's a prime candidate to be able to step into the lining world. That's, that's how most guys get in. I'm sick of ripping up people's yards or, you know, their houses or whatever. Right. And for us coming from the Picote background, um, you know, having worked with Picote for so long, they develop tools specifically for bad pipe, um, you know, cleaning bad pipe, you know, the spider is like a perfect example, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that thing was all the rage when it, when it first came out because nobody really had a tool that could navigate through trench rot. Yeah. Um, and it does a great job. Now they've, you know, there's the sweeper and a few other tools that are really great for that. And so there's ways to now kind of approach these situations that, that have never existed before. Um, so the last, you know, really in the last, I would say, probably five to eight years, there's been so much advancement in mm-hmm. the technology making trenchless so much more, I guess, streamlined, available, accessible, less scary, less risky. Um, you know, so understanding these potential jobs, what you can and can't do is is critical. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and another, you know, another big part of that is having the right crew to take right. on those types of yeah. those situations. And, and, you know, we've, we've seen it, we do a ton of training here in our facility. So, uh, you know, years of Picote training here, um, you know, now as American pipeline and supplies, um, we're, you know, fully in the lining and patching world of training and, and this right. and that. So, um, but we, you know, see time and time again, whether or not you have the right guys, um, that are, they're able to step into those positions. And it really is, honestly, it doesn't really matter how much experience they have. It's more the mindset and the personality. So, um, I know you were saying earlier when we were kind of discussing those types of people, it's the guys that are mechanically engineered, um, you know, in their, in their, their brain, the way that they work, they're just good, you know, mechanically. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I think that 
it, it almost starts, you know, we talk about crew, it, it almost starts, you know, everybody's kind of involved and there, there's so many different, there, there's so many different types of companies that we deal with. We've got companies that have, you know, a whole sales team that do nothing but sales in drain work. And, um, you know, they're, they're the ones that are out there kind of educating and, and doing the selling um, with homeowners and business owners. But, you know, there's really, there, there's an, un, there needs to be an understanding there. What can I do? What can't I do? And there needs to be good communication between who's selling the job mm -hmm. and who's installing, right? So a lot yeah. of times I've seen, and we've been on jobs together where we, we go out to a job site and I go, oh, the, the sales guy sold this job. And then we show up and we're like, well, this is not really Surprise. like he sold this <laughs> as, as the, uh, as the solution, but that's not really the solution. What, what the solution should be, should be different, you know? And he doesn't know that. And so it, that, that knowledge needs to go throughout the entire company. Yeah. Um, and so, but going back to the, to the crew thing, um, you know, we, we have companies come in here and sometimes they're like, well, Joe here, he's my, he's going to be my lead guy. You know, Joe's the more senior, you know, kind of older guy, but then there's, there, let's say there's uh, Billy, right? He's the young guy. He's only been with us for two weeks or whatever, you know? And uh, he's just tagging along to kind of learn. He's new, but we want him to learn. Well, by the end of it, what we see as a team here observing the training process, we realize Joe's not your guy. Joe's not your lead guy. He's not the one that is passionate or driving it or even good at it in some cases, right? It's Billy. It's the young guy. And we pulled owners and managers and people aside and said, hey, you, know, you may want to rethink your yeah. format here, uh, even though it may ruffle some feathers. And we've seen that work out. I mean, we, time and again, we've seen examples of that. Um, and I would say think outside the box. You know, there's guys maybe inside your organization that know, you know, are right. mechanically inclined and maybe they're just not in the right position or maybe they have the capability to do this type of work. Because it, it's not for the faint of heart. You got to be a bit of a MacGyver, you know? So, yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's one thing we talk about constantly. There is, you know, the barrier of entry, um, right. what, what it takes to, um, not only get into lining, but stay into lining. I don't know how many times, you know, we are, a lot of our new customers are, yeah, I got into lining, had a massive failure, didn't have enough support, got scared and got out of it. Right. Um, and that's, you know, that's the mindset that we're trying to combat. We're, we're getting rid of the you know, massive ups and downs of, of lining. Yeah. We want to make, make it more consistent. And, um, you know, guy, guys like that is, is where we really, we, we want to kind of inject into that, um, that world is like the, the proper training and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the right crew to help you get into that. Um, right. and, and a huge part of that is training. Right. You know, if, if you do have one of those jobs, the, the hardest part is when you don't know what went wrong. You know, if you do, then it's then it's the, the scare factor, of, right. you know, the, the fear factor, if you will. Um, but if you do have the proper training or the right resource to talk to after a job like that or during a job like that, that can be the, the difference in success or failure or whether that lining trailer or truck is going to be used or right. not used over the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. Investing in training is such a critical thing. I mean, it, it has to be done. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that a lot of guys push back on, but you know, we, we love it when we see a crew um, come in that gets trained in, in, on the other side of that. You know, when they come in and they, they don't quite know what to, to expect. And then by the end of it, it's like nothing but high fives and, you know, attaboys. And it, it's really exciting to see that. And I think that, you know, just recently we had a company come in and, and they trained with us and they, they were a little skeptical, I think, you know, um, as to what to think. And I think in the past they'd had bad experiences with training. It was more you know, the trainer came out, spent a day or two with them shooting in, you know, straight plastic pipe above ground, straight shots, you know, real simple stuff. Um, whereas we do a little bit more of a boot camp style. We, we will cater the piping assemblies to their needs, to their style, to what, what's happening in their local uh, area. And so, you know, they, they appreciate that. And of course, by the end of that, they were like, we're so glad we invested this time. Um, and it's not cheap. You know, we charge for training. We do that because, well, number one, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive to, to hold a training course here. It like it's all all consuming um, in the office. Everybody's focused on the customer when they're here, and um, you know, APS does a really good job of that of, of giving that a priority. But 
it, it's not cheap for these guys to to book airfare or drive mm-hmm. or book hotels, meals. I mean, all these sorts of things are all part of that investment. But if you don't make that investment, the 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 flip side of that is epic failure, which is going to cost probably twice as much, yeah. if not yeah. much, much more yeah. um, to fail. And, you know, sometimes you're investing in, in failure with these crews, you know, you're going to, you're going to try, right. You, you have a crew of guys, you say, you're going to be the lining crew and it either works to a degree or it doesn't. And mm-hmm. you have to adjust as you go. Like I said, sometimes Joe's the guy, sometimes Billy's the guy, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. You, you have to invest the time and the money to figure that out. And once you nail it, you're golden. You move forward and you, you advance, you grow. And I'll, I'll, um, I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball here. So you, you know, you kind of, we've talked about this over the years. Now I know I'm your cousin, so yeah, you know, whatever. But, um, <laughs> but when you built the team for Picote, mm-hmm. right, when you built the team of trainers and guys are going to be installers and stuff like that, we each, you know, you know, I'll just you know tell everyone we, the guys that are in this office all have very unique skill sets and personalities. Yeah. But we all work together really well. Like there's right. things that I, I go to Taylor, Ari, or Chris for, or Jake, and then and vice versa. So mm-hmm. we all kind of have our role in that. What did you when you were looking for those kinds of guys when you when you kind of picked out the people that you wanted? Just for the business owners that'll be listening to this, what what did you look for? in the different people and kind of what the end goal was with that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thanks for putting me on the spot. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I started ultimately, um, Ari was kind of the first one to come on board and, you know, th- there was a couple of things I knew about Ari was he's very meticulous in what he does. So anything he does, he does well. And whether it's sports or anything, yeah. he's just a star. Um, and I knew that because of my personality, I'm not, uh, admittedly, I'm not the most organized person. And, and I think a lot of entrepreneurial type people yeah. um, are a little scattered to a degree. And, and that's kind of how I am. My brain is. I have a lot of really great ideas and I know how to implement and I know how to do the work. But I need somebody to kind of come alongside and, you know, keep that focus kind of harnessed, you know, a little bit. And Ari's really good at that. He's very even keel. Um, he's very detail oriented. And so having a person like that by my side um, has been amazing. And that was one of the things that, that right off the bat set the precedence for how we were going to move forward, um, with the, with the U S Picot team. And so, um, you know, as we grew, I, I knew that I needed, um, another person that could be a good kind of a field warrior, kind of a person that could be really dedicated in the field and, and understand plumbing. And so Chris came along and Chris was a plumber for many years and, did drain work. And so it worked out really well to have him join the team. And then Taylor was very mechanically inclined. So as we grew the business, we needed repairs. It was looking for those, the the things that I needed from a necessity standpoint as we grow the business. And so, you know, for, for business owners and and even like yourself, you're very technically, um, you're really good technically from the standpoint of, you know, you can jump on a computer and, and create a killer PowerPoint, and then you can go right out into the shop like you're going to do this afternoon and do a patch training virtually, right? So y- you have the ability to adapt, and, and you're really well-rounded from the standpoint of being able to, to kind of wear a lot of different hats. And um, I think that for other owners, as you're starting to build your business, um, focus on what you need at the time and and kind of look within to see who's who's meeting that in you know, it may be your warehouse guy. Right. You, you may be really surprised to find that like your warehouse guy is like super detail oriented and organized. And he's just kind of comes in and does his job every day. But if you walked up to him and said, Hey, uh, Hey Bob, um, you know, uh, you're, you keep the shop really well oiled and you know, let, let's, let's train another person to kind of do what you've done. You've created a process. I need you to come over here to the lining team and I need you to kind of lead this process because there's a lot of steps. There's a lot of detail that goes into it. So I would say that, you know, find people in your organization that are meeting your expectations now in that area. It's just right. a different part of the business right. yeah. and see if you can kind of cross pollinate that, you know? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We've been really fortunate. I mean, you know, we've got some young folks here. <laughs> we've got some twenties, twenties mm-hmm. staff, you know, and, They've been awesome. Everybody's was like, don't hire millennials, you know? And I'm like, well, okay. But 
they've all proven themselves to be really, really good. And it's been awesome. So, yeah, I'll even say this. If you have, if you have millennials that aren't into the plumbing, maybe try them on the lining side. Mm, Yeah. It seems like, it seems like, you know, men and women of that age really enjoy for whatever reason, the tech that comes with, with the lining and they're just naturally good at it. You know, I think uh, this is a little bit of, I guess it's kind of a little side note. Something that I really want to see in our organization and the, and the gals here in our office are really into it is that they want to learn, like they want to get hands on with the tools and the processes, whether it's lining or patching or whatever, they want to actually like do it. And, you know, one thing I hear all the time, especially some of these big franchise companies is like, they want to get more women into the workforce. I think women would be awesome at lining. Yeah. Like, Patching, lining, I think they would be great at it. I mean, they can do just about anything, right? Um, your wife is like super, like she's like keep crazy, telling, keep ath- telling her. like crazy athlete chick, yeah. right? So she's, I mean, they can do anything. I mean, my wife's mm-hmm. the same way. She's very, you know, she could do just about anything, you know? So they could do lining. And I don't know why our industry doesn't focus more on that. I think we should. But I want to make that a thing here. Like, I don't know. I, we were just talking about it the other day, the girls in marketing. Like, we should figure out a way to, like, recruit more women into our trade. I think that would go a really long way, especially right now with so many people out of work, you know? Yeah. But they're, I mean, think about the detail that, that, you know? I'm just sort of now realizing how much better my wife would be at lining pipe than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. I know my wife would be. She's, you know. Well, I married her. She's detailed. And she's like OCD. So, you know, she keeps me in line. But yeah, so I, I just yeah, think, cool. yeah, that's really cool. I think as you're building a team, don't, don't, um, not, not like don't discriminate isn't the right word, I guess. I, I don't mean that in the physical sense, but just like, like, don't, don't disregard that maybe there's, there are females that you could recruit to be really good at this too. And we know a couple, like we know, I mean, we know women in the trade, right. in the plumbing trade. And we know, you know, we met some gals that do lining, um, that have come through this office and they've been amazing, really good. So I think, I think think there should be more. Yeah. I think that the gist of that is don't, don't put your people in a box, let them out of that box for a minute and kind of think, think about their potential. Right. What they could be. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of these guys are in business because they built a successful business. So look around and see what people, mm-hmm. see what their strong suits are. You know, you'd be surprised. Maybe yeah. somebody's looking to switch it up in, internally and, and there's opportunity there for you to grow your, your trenchless side. So. I like it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, so and that's, you know, one of the things is, like we were just saying, you have to invest in training. I would even venture to say, if you're not willing to invest in training, you should not start lining pipe. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, I mean, there's just in, in, you know, this as a, as a safety precaution to you guys, when we talk about the barrier of entry, that could potentially be a failed job. And if that failed job is in the wrong place at the wrong time, that could be the end of your lining. And so, right. yeah. so what, what we want to do and why it's so important to us, we caution people all the time. Don't go over your head to start, you know, work into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and really, really you know, walk alongside us or, or another manufacturer or you know, company, whatever. But, um, our, our main focus is on training and post sale and post training support. So, you know, when we, when we sell you equipment or when we, when you come here for training, that creates a relationship with us. That is, you have everyone's cell phone number. Um, you know, we get videos, pictures, all kinds of stuff all day long from, you know, all of our installers across mm-hmm. the country. Um, and you know, some out of the country that, that, you know, it's, it's really a relationship and, and we want to make you guys as, as successful as possible. Um, so yeah, it, re, investing in training is so important. It, it is time consuming and it, there is a cost to it, but there is, there is no better investment in my mind than, than training the guys and, and girls that you're going to have in that position. Um, one, just to mitigate risk, but also to make your life a million times easier, um, along the way. So and then, you know, there's obviously the other question of, you know, what are the different types of lining? I've seen lots of guys and, and, mm-hmm. and women asking recently, you know, what, what do I, how do I get into lining? Like what equipment am I going to use? Um, so do you want to break that down a little bit? I know there's 
a big part of it is what type of who your customers are, what type of lining you know you think you'll be doing, whether it's large diameter, right. or small diameter lines, all that, and that that does dramatically change kind of your setup that you would use. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always interesting to to talk to a guy that's just kind of starting to get into one thing or another. Maybe they're not even in the trenchless game at all, and we take a lot of those phone calls, right? I mean. Yeah. We have a lot of calls coming to us from guys that are just really trying to figure out how they dip their toe in the water of the trenchless world. And um, I, you know, I find myself, especially just based on past experiences and, and the knowledge that I have and the things that I've seen over the years, to kind of talk people back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, which I don't know if that's the best approach always. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, when you, when you're talking about, you know. When you're trying to sell something, you, you try and oh yeah, of course, come on, come over here and look at this Cadillac, yeah. you know. But but the thing that I've found is that, you know, people can get very overwhelmed and they can make really bad decisions right mm -hmm. off, you know, right off the cuff, and and so what we want to do is to try and limit that, um, and help them understand you know what solution is best. And the perfect example is you know um, we've seen a lot of people come in and they want to get into coding. A lot of people think coding is very um, low risk, and it is, uh, but, but it's low risk, it's easier, it's, you know, it, it's cheaper, um, and it's going to work better in the scenarios that I'm, I'm looking at. And they come in, and they, they, they start to realize, well, wait a second, I didn't, I didn't know, you know, we've got all these, you know, like show and tell here in the office mm -hmm. or in the, in the shop, and they see all these different things, and they're starting to look at these two-inch pipe samples going, wait a minute, how did you line that? Like, what do you mean? Right. That's easy. Well, the whole reason I want to coat is because I, I you know, I thought two inch liner was impossible. No, it's not. You just got to know how to do it. Right. And so people start to change their, their mind on how they should be doing things. And so we approach it as, you know, what is the best fit for you? And, you know, do you need to go buy this massive truck and trailer and, and get set up like I did right off the bat? Um, no, start small. You can start small mm -hmm. and grow into it. We've seen that time and again. I would say that probably... 90% of our business is, is just kind of baby steps, right? So, you know, guys find an opportunity where they're doing a lot of camera inspections and drain cleaning and they're finding, you know, root intrusion or maybe their trans four to six inch transitions are bad or, you know, oh, we see, we see a lot of blown out, you know, 90s or, you know, maybe the, the joint right at the connection is bad to the main and that needs a patch or whatever. And we just help them baby step into that. We don't immediately launch into, well, you need to buy a truck and trailer and this and that. And, you know, um, there's so many different types of lining. And so I would say that, you know, when you call us and you talk to us, we're going to try and advise you to start small in some capacity to understand what you need to do to fix that particular job. And then what are you running up against mostly? You know, what, what do you, what are you, what's the reoccurring theme in your business as it pertains to drain cleaning or problems that you see in sewers? Um, but I mean, there's everything from, you know, large diameter, small diameter, um, you know, junctions doing Y's and T's, things like that, um, crosses, um, there's inversion, there's pull in place, there's drums and shooters. And I mean, it's, there's, there's a ton, there's patching, there's all different types of patching. There's big patching, little patching, patching P traps. You know, um, you know, what are, what is it that you're coming up against? Um, and then there's all kinds of, op, you know, options for once those liners are in, how do I, you know, do I, is it ambient cure? Is it steam cure? Is it hot water cure? Is it UV? I mean, the, the options are endless. And so I would say for us, we're trying to help advise people in the best way possible for not only the scenario that they call about, but what's the reoccurring theme in your business? What, what do you see the most of? Because it's different from California to New York. It's different from Chicago to, to Houston, right? So yeah, that is, that is if, yeah, if anything else, keep in mind that when you talk to guys online and, you know, around the country, keep in mind that around the country, they are, there are drastically different scenarios yeah. in, in oh, yeah. each. I mean, the stuff that we see in New York Versus the stuff that we see in California is like, it's not even like the same. It's night and day. It's so much different. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, we, we set guys up with different stuff because of that. You know, right. I'm not just going to sell a generic here, buy this. This will work for everything. No, yeah. that's not how it works, you know. Um, yeah, for sure. And it, you have to, if you don't do that due diligence on behalf of your customer, because they're calling most of the time because they don't necessarily know. They're in the discovery phase. And I wish yeah. that like, 
you know, back in the day when I was in that discovery phase that somebody would have been real with me and been like, look, dude, you're going to get in over your head. You don't need, you don't need all that, Mm -hmm. you know, just here's the basics of what you start with. And I would say that the, the big thing for me as, as I kind of started to discover that was that, you know, Pakot, watching the Pakot cruise, I mean, we spent a lot of time in Finland and, and in Scandinavia and watching how these guys operate and they're doing, they're undertaking some pretty massive project work. I mean, they're lining entire condos from, you know, all the stacks, all the branch lines, everything. And they're doing it out of a Sprinter van. And we're here going, you know, buy a 30 foot trailer, or, you know, like th- the theme in the United States is, you know, this massive trailer or massive setup of equipment when these guys are doing the exact same work out of the back of a Sprinter van, but they're doing it in a very efficient yeah. way. Yeah, I, there was there was a day in Finland, and this isn't even this isn't even like a big deal. Just so everyone knows, this is like a, a normal day with the Pakot crew. I literally went out and shot twenty one liners with Timo one day out of the back of a Sprinter van, one job site. Well, in, he's, in afternoon. he's a bit of a trenchless god, so I mean, hope you're listening, Timo. He should. We'll send it to him. <laughs> he's the man. All those guys, they're all amazing. It's unbelievable the things that they are able to accomplish over there. And it's not just its not just in Finland. I mean, it, it's happening in Sweden. It's happening all over yeah. the place, really. Yeah. But um, we've spent the most time in Finland with the crews there. And I would say that, you know, they're a pretty good testament. I mean, look at the success that Picote has found worldwide. Right. It, it, it doesn't happen for no reason. There's real experience there. And those, the things that we learned there, in fact, I remember the first time I ever went in there, I was actually working for a different manufacturer and I went to go visit Picote just strictly about their tools. Didn't realize the extent of what knowledge they had in the lining business. I walked into their shop and watched how they were doing things and the processes that they were doing and, you know, glue, you know, like gluing liners to <laughs> calibration tubes and all, doing all these different things. I'm going, oh my gosh, I feel, I almost feel like guilty for knowing this information. And like working for another company, you know, it was like, it was overwhelming. I was like, holy cow, what, what, you know, and I would say that, that, you know, seeing those things come to the United States and those processes and methods has been remarkable. Um, It's changed the game. Um, I would say the tooling, you know, has changed the game and there's just so much to be gained from understanding other methods. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to. You don't have to go full money right out of the out of the gate. I mean, the things that you yeah. could do with a cannon, just a cannon. I mean, you could oh, shoot yeah. branch lines like crazy out of a cannon. You know, you could do a lot, and that's you know that baby step uh, is is the way I would go. I mean, if I was starting all over again, I'd probably have a a cannon and some patching gear, mm-hmm. you know, camera and a few other you know odd and ends, you know, mini cleaner, probably a super mini, and throw it all in a van and <laughs> start start going to town. I mean, you know, and, and eventually you're going to do enough work to where you're going to justify being able to buy a tank and kind of get yourself set up a little bit better and with a little more equipment, you know? So it's really simple. I think people underestimate the ability to, to start small and watching how they do things over there. And even in Australia, their, their philosophy and, you know, they're, they're our partner company, APS, um, uh, Australian pipelining supplies. They, you know, they have that same approach. It's like, Start small. You don't need you don't need all the bells and whistles right off the bat. A drum, a manual roller, and a, you know a vacuum and a few other things. You're in business. You know, twenty five grand or less. You're you're on the road putting liner in. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And that that start small mentality. So when you when you start with you know the patching and the cannons, your risk factor is also significantly lower. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, there's there's a big difference in failing a patch, and failing. 100 foot you know and t- to really get your feet wet and start right. with the small materials get used to the materials stuff like that i mean it yeah for sure yeah the guys that we see start you know with, with patching and a cannon are significantly more comfortable when they step into drums and yeah that whole world yeah i totally agree i mean we've seen that time and again you know um it, it helps you understand urgency it helps you understand the materials a little bit it just starts to kind of get your head in the game as to you know preparation is key, you know, things like that. And, and that all translates over when you start going bigger and longer, you know? Yeah. yeah. So 
Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's just that you, when you step up to the, the longer shots, it's just the same thing, just more of it, you know? Right. So. And there's so many different options. I mean, we, we kind of talked a little bit about some of these things. And, you know, like we said, pull in place, inversion, you know, shooters, continuous shooters. Um, I would say our, our forte here is really, you know, tank shots using a drum to shoot. Um, you know, that's kind of where we like to be. Um, we're not trying to go too big either, really. Um, although we do get a lot of calls for guys saying, hey, you know, how do I shoot 300 feet of liner, you know, out of a drum? Well, we do have, you know, we have some access to things like that for sure. Um, <clears throat> but it's, again, not for the faint of heart. You know, you think right. about right. 200 feet of liner, that's, you know, eight inch in diameter. That's a lot of resin. You're, you're wrestling around a lot of weight, a lot of time. You know, so there's guys that call with big ambitions and we're always like, well, you know, you may want to think about that and, uh, you know, maybe sub this one or, you know, we're happy to get you set up, but, you know, you really need to consider this, this, and this, you know, so. Yeah, and yeah, I think on that, just give us a call. If you if you are unsure of what you, you know, what kind of methods you want to use, yeah. just call. Because, I mean, the amount of guys that we've had, we've had guys in here that are like, yeah, I'm 100% I want to go UV. And, you know, by the time they're done, like, well, actually, I'm going to start significantly cheaper with a hot water setup. Right. You know, we, we, we're not, we're not trying <laughs> the last thing we're going to do is sell you the most expensive product. Right. We, Cause then, you know, we are, yeah, I'm sales, but I'm technical training and support. So right. that means, you know, if it doesn't work, then you're going to be calling me at midnight. Right. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, they do. <laughs> yeah. So, so my goal is to get you as successful as possible and as efficient as, as possible. Um, I don't, I'm not trying to sell you an expensive product. I want you to, to be successful in the field. So whatever works for your area, for your team, that's what we want to try to steer you towards. Um, and it's just, it makes it so much easier on, on us as, as well. You know, when, when we do that, the training makes more sense and everything. So, yeah. um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the area that we're at. So inversion, um, you can do that with one access point. So if you're using an inversion drum or a cannon, you know, that's one access point. Um, if you have a really, really long liner, that's when you start looking at continuous shooters, you know, um, like, like you're saying, we can do long liners out of inversion tanks, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're getting very long, that's where continuous shooters go. The difference in those is you have more control over an inversion drum than you do a continuous shooter. Um, and then, you know, the pull in place, that's two access points, um, very long, um, kind of, I guess, packer is essentially what it would be. Right. Um, and so you're gonna have two access points, pull it into place. Um, and you can land exactly where you want to on those. Um, but again, two access points, it's a very big, more larger operation, I guess would be, um, the equipment, I guess is, is larger. So, um, more to deal with there. So just kind of, kind of things to think about, you know, depending on what you're wanting to do, do you have the crew to, you know, mess with things that size and, you know, what, what are my guys, you know, most geared towards, I guess is the, right. So, yeah. Yeah. And then patching, I mean, you know, obviously that's one of our strong suits. We really, you know, we kind of focus on patching quite a bit. And part of that is that, you know, patching is kind of the gateway to lining. Um, you know, we, we certainly, you know, for us using the same type of liner material that you would use in your inversion process is helpful. So it, it's an easy transition into the lining side. Once you're, once you're pretty good with patching helps you understand urgency and yeah. You know. Yeah. And the ROI that comes with patching, um, is outrageous. It's outrageous. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, for, for five grand, you can get a solid patching setup and even, I guess less than that, really, that's, that's kind right. of the whole caboodle, but, um, you can get a solid patching setup and, and go out and start installing patches with, you know, at the most, you can use two guys to do a patch. I think the average number around the country has been like 2,500 or something. The guys are charging right. for a patch. So, um, still providing the customer an excellent service, mm -hmm. but making your money back extremely fast. And then, you know, the, the profit margins are really, really good for patching. Right. So, yeah. you know, a, a patch system, a cannon, um, some Pocote machines, and you're, you know, you're ready to get into it really for a really low cost. Yeah. You're, you're, you're seeing some serious return on, on that investment for sure. And, you know, again, we've seen it time and again, we've got, you know, a lot of people on, social media that are talking about that. And I, I think that, you know, 
over the years, that's been the biggest testament is, you know, when you see people, other people right. giving, you know, giving a testimony to, to how well something's working, um, goes a lot, a lot further than anything you and I can say, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I'll just say that, you know, I hundred percent appreciate, um, those guys for doing that and, and saying, Hey, you know, this is, this is working. This has helped change my business. And, you know, we see a lot of reposts of APS stuff and guys having success in the field. And, you know, we, we pride ourselves in that. Every time I see one of those posts, I feel really good about it. Cause I know that, you know, the team is doing a great job supporting those guys and they're finding success in the field, just like we told them from the beginning. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's, it's that, but it's also the evolution. So yeah. guys start, like I was saying, right. start with patching. Yep. Well, then they get a cannon, then they get, you know, winding drums, then they're, you know, getting into, and that's the natural progression. I think I, 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 probably a lot of you guys that are listening, I've talked to you on the phone at some point, but, um, you know, I, I always say there's like a natural progression that guys take, Right. you know, you're, you're going to get patching, then you're going to get a cannon, then you're going to get right. a drum, then you're going to get, you know, different curing methods. And, right. and that's just, that's just, you know, we see that time and time and time again. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, you know, staying with that and, and, you know, progressing through that is we really like to see. Um, guys moving in that direction. That's how we know that they're confident and they, they trust our crew and our team. And yeah. So, yeah. And you know, it's been, it's been one of the, the big topics of, <clears throat> you know, of the day is who do I, who do I buy from? Who do I deal with? You know, and we're always careful to try and understand who they're dealing with now. If they're in trenchless um, to understand what, what it is that they're doing. And, you know, why are you, you know, there's a reason you're calling us. Either we've got something that the other person doesn't have or you're not getting something from the other person um, from a, a support standpoint or whatever. Or maybe it's a stock issue. Maybe, you know, this guy doesn't have something. And um, we have we have people like that that kind of are loyal to other people and they'll kind of come through and say, well, XYZ didn't have that. I, I want to get it from you. And then maybe we never talk to them again or maybe they, they just call once in a while. We, we appreciate that, of course. Um, but we're going to treat everybody the same. Um, you know, we want to, we want to see people be successful and, you know, we have different ideas than a, a lot of other people have. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do things. And so when it comes down to, you know, making a decision, who should I deal with? Um, you know, we, we just try and do our best to, to prove to people, um, that we've got, you know, what they need to do the job and, uh, if we don't, we'll be honest about it and say, you know, maybe you need to call X, Y, Z, or maybe this is a better fit for you or whatever. But, um, I would say the biggest, the biggest, um, factor in that is support. You know, um, I'd say we pride ourselves on support. We've proven that for many years with Picote, you know, we've become a reliable source in the industry for all things, you know, small diameter. I would say we've heard a lot of horror stories over the years because ever you know when something goes wrong, you know that's when we get the phone call. We would get the <laughs> phone calls, right? So it's it's like, well, I failed the liner. Okay, what? Here's my options. I either call the robot guys, uh, you know, you start calling all the different robot guys, or you call Picote. And a lot of times those calls would come into us, and we would we would hear the good, bad, and ugly. Because you know when there's a failure, um, you know people tend to sing like a bird and <laughs> you hear, you hear a lot of, uh, a lot of stories, but, um, you know, it comes down to support and, you know, what do I need? And people have come to realize that we can help them in that area and, and trust us. And so what we're trying to do is kind of do that same thing, but now on the front end, you know, we've seen, we've seen the, the level of, of failure, um, in this process, in, in the lining process. And, um, so we've kind of taken some of those lessons and went, okay, well, what if they tried it this way and did it this way? They would potentially have some more success than what they've been doing. Yeah. And so we, now we're kind of taking those lessons learned and reapplying those back to the front end of the process and saying, hey, we, we've got some solutions for you that would potentially help you avoid failure. Right. And so that support mechanism, I think, is huge. Yeah, and that's, you know, we, we, we're very, very particular on the methods that we use. Um, and I think that's helped us a lot through that. Um, yeah. you know, we've, we've had some capabilities in certain areas. I'm, I won't say exactly what they are for this reason. Um, we've had capability on, on certain methods for a little while that we're not just telling people just yet because 
the last thing I want to do is tell you you can do something if I haven't fully vetted it or tested it and made sure that right. it's, I mean, I'm going to use it multiple times in the mm-hmm. field before I tell someone else to do it. Right. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that is, you know, having guys that are familiar with, you know, actually installing this stuff in the field and, and right. because it's so much different, so much different than doing it on top of a table. Yeah. Um, or, you know, in training or anything like that, the actual execution of that, what to look for, um, you know, s- stopping problems before they, they happen, you know, right. that, that kind of stuff is, is so key. Um, and you know, that, that kind of support to have that. And so, yeah, we, we have, we've been out in the field quite a bit and, um, I mean, yeah, Jake owned his own company for a long time. And so, um, lots of experience in, in the lining world uh, in the building. And so we, we really, really lean on that, um, for support and, you know, talking to you guys on the phone and our installers, um, and, and just having a, a cornucopia of options, mm-hmm. um, of different ways to, to tackle something. I mean, when I look at a job, if I'm on support or if I'm talking to someone, I think of at least five to 10 different ways to do a job before, you know, we decide on one. Right. What's what's the best way for this specific scenario? Consider all the variables and do that. Right. Having those options is huge, and yeah. that's that's where you, the support, um, and who you choose to work with matters the most, in yeah. my mind. Totally agree. Are are, are they going to be able to come up with different options? Is yeah. there is there you know, what kind of help can they offer me? Right. Um, because what you don't want to do is buy the whole setup and then be alone. That's a very scary place, I think, for a well, lot of guys. Well, we see that all the time. We see that well, a lot. Right. I call them orphans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, either it's kind of yeah, so true. It well, I mean, yeah. if you think about it, you know, it's 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 like orphaned <laughs> installers of, you know, various types of equipment and processes from you know all over the all over the country. But, um, you know, I, we've we've gone into places where you know, they're, they're looking to kind of reignite their, you know, lining process in their, in their organization. And, you know, you see a, a, a truck or a trailer, or a, a pile of equipment that's been sitting there for God knows how long collecting dust and everybody's discouraged. None of the sales guys want to sell it because they sold the job and it was supposed to be a good ticket for them. And then something got screwed up for one reason or another. And most of the time it's, it's lack of training or it's, or maybe it's that you know they sold a job and they do they don't do it they don't do it enough to maintain that kind of um, edge that they need to be successful on every single install. Or maybe somebody you know tells them, oh yeah, you should be able to do that, but they don't fully understand. I mean that's why we ask for videos and pictures all the time. Yeah. You know, hey, can you take a picture of that? Can we FaceTime? Can we? Can you just send me a screenshot of your camera screen? You know, anything helps, right? You know, because sometimes we've seen things and we've been like, well, that's not at all how you described it. Right. Oh, well, you know, yeah. And it just could be one little stumble of of understanding could make the difference to how that job goes or doesn't go. Right. You know, Um, and the whole point of this is that we're trenchless, right? I mean, it's, you know, that's what we're in. We're trying to do this without having to act, you know, dig too much or at all. Um, And so you know, understanding how it's going to go from the beginning is important. Um, but there's a lot of orphaned trenchless guys, in my opinion. Um, I've <clears> talked <throat> to quite a few. Yeah. 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 They're, they're going, wow, how, you know, we're, we're checking out your social media and we're seeing this, this, and this, we didn't know, we, we didn't know that was possible, you know? And so we, we talk to them and you know, we oftentimes will be out in the shop doing, you know, I, it's very common for me to walk out of my office out into the shop floor and you guys are out there on FaceTime with somebody showing them, oh, yeah, check this out. You know, you're yeah. jamming a packer into a pipe or, you know, check out, you know, ramming push rods through three-inch 90s and doing crazy, you know, crazy stuff. I um, recommend that. <laughs> yeah, don't, we don't recommend that. Um, <clears throat> not in all cases. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're all about, you know, trying to figure out the best solutions for people. And, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people that I, I'm just thinking of a few that, you know, we, we talk to them often and we, we're out there doing crazy stuff or we'll try and R and D something or whatever, you know, but that, that's just, it doesn't come, you know, we, we had a crew in here recently where they brought in some equipment from another manufacturer and it was just an absolute train wreck. And we went through, 
we went through a lot of hassle to get it all going again. I mean, a lot of the stuff was dilapidated, broke down, hadn't been running forever, was, you know, I mean... Been uh, sitting there for years. Uh, yeah, just for sitting for years. I think the tank, like, had... Like mold growing on the inside. It was horrendous. It was terrible. That was bad. You know, and we went the extra mile. We didn't know we had to do that when it when it arrived, right? They they brought it down so we could kind of retrofit a few things, and it was a train wreck, <laughs> to be honest. It all turned out well, right? Because we put the effort in. I mean, I looked out the window of the marketing room at one point, and Chris had the entire whole front panel off their generator just gutted. Yeah draining gas and oil and, you know, cleaning the carb and all sorts of stuff. I mean, we almost, we almost, <laughs> we almost overdo it in some cases, yeah. but it's just that we care so much and we want people to be successful on a whole different level, I think, than, than some. So. Yeah. I would, I would say to all you orphans out there, um, <laughs> um, if you, if you're looking for a company to support you, someone that you can call, I think that's the the main thing is like, who do yeah. I call? Who do I talk to? Um, and not just a sales guy. Yeah, not just a sales guy. Because I'll tell you, I'm I'm the sales guy, but I'm not a sales guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't, yeah, so, we don't even, like, we don't, we don't really we don't, even have a title. We, we don't, don't really have titles. Yeah. It's it's more like you're just the guy to call. I'm the guy that or... call, answers the phone. But right. I'm also the guy that's either, <laughs> yeah. can be training or on support jobs or, so we're not, you know. I don't think any of us are actual salespeople, which is nice. We actually really, you know, we, we, it, it helps a lot. Um, I think for everyone, but, but if you, if you are looking for someone to call, um, if you're looking for someone of specific scenarios, can I do this? Can I not do this? What's the best method to do that? Um, give us a call. Um, you know, we'll, we'll help in any way that we can. Um, and I think all of our installers would be willing, you know, to affirm that. I don't think there's anyone yeah. that we work with that, that yeah. would be like, yeah, those guys never answer their phones. Um, Cause you'll have all of our numbers. So if one of us doesn't answer, then you can just call the other one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's, I mean, there's so many people that, <clears throat> that, that call us for support for, I mean, what I had a guy call the other day and he was like, literally flat out ask me like, Hey, what's the part number for this thing? I can't remember exactly what it was. I need to know so I can order it from X, Y, Z. And I was like, well, I'm so glad you called me <laughs> to ask for the part number for, you know, this particular thing so you can buy it from someone else, even though we now sell that, right? So, right. but that's okay. Like, I think it, it was fine. It was kind of, I just made a joke with him, you know, because I've known him for years. But um, he's like, oh, well, oh, yeah. Well, I'll just order it from you. I was like, well, that's fine if you want to. I don't care. You know, I'm happy to help you either way. And it was a Picote part, so that's just natural. I mean, we've been helping people, you know, with Picote stuff for years, and so it's fine, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just I think in our DNA here to to be more of a support mechanism first and foremost than you know than trying to cram something down your throat that you don't need. We certainly don't yeah. do it that way. Um, you know, it's it's more about really supporting you and creating a relationship that will sustain because a lot of these guys are people that were probably are going to be around for a long time as long as they'll have us. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of a good just kind of discussion around lining. And, and I think a lot of you guys, as far as the equipment that you need, okay. Or just like really direct. Okay. You will need some sort of installation equipment. So you'll need a lining drum or a continuous shooter or a pull and play setup, um, or or a cannon, or you know something like that. So you will need that main component, right? You'll need a wet out roller, um, a way to impregnate the liner to fully saturate the resin in there, and to calibrate, um, you know, the thickness of that, which can be done with pretty much any wet out roller. Um, I, now there's some geared more towards longer liners. There's electric and manual. The electric stuff's obviously better for. Um, a longer liner, but it's more expensive. So there's the give and take there. H how long are you planning on doing? How many guys do you have available, you know, during wet out? Um, you know, that kind of setup. How big is your trailer or truck, which you'll need something like that. Um, just an, a clean area that you can work that's portable to job sites yeah. where you can set up your electric, be out of the sun. That always ends up being, you know, a trailer or a truck. We're not huge on the throw everything out on the sidewalk. I, yeah, I don't. And I don't use like... like 
linoleum rollers. That's not really our style, I would yeah. say. I, I'm, I'm never going to. I'm never going to budge on that one. Yeah. Well, the, the risk, the added risk that comes yeah. with that, just not worth it I've in my mind. I've seen so many horror stories. Right. And just, you know, hot pavement or the right. sun or rocks or a nail or a yeah. staple. I mean, anything can happen when you expose yeah. a liner like that. Yeah. If it's a little short shot, sure, you know, it's fine. Fi- figure out a little work area, but, you know. Yeah. Or a squirrel. I'm really about, well, yeah, a squirrel. A squirrel runs by and chews a hole in it. Could be anything, you guys. Yeah, any, anything. You know, that green resin looks like a vegetable. Broccoli. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you'll need a roller. Get you know, get a setup where you can be a truck or a trailer. It doesn't have to be, you know, fancy schmancy. Um, it's nice when they are. And a vacuum. And a vacuum. A vacuum, vacuum impregnation. Vacuum Please. impregnation and a way to chill resin if you're in hot climates. Yeah. Right? We have, we put most of the time refrigerators um, Mm -hmm. in our trucks and trailers. Mm -hmm. It makes a huge difference just to be able to chill that before you start wet out. It gives you way more work time. Okay. Um, You'll need a compressor um, for patching. A smaller compressor is okay. Um, But when you're getting into lining, you really do want a substantial compressor. To, you need a good volume do, of air. Yeah. If you do have some kind of small leak, your compressor has to be able to keep up with that. So yeah. that's really important. A high quality compressor is, is worth it. Yeah. Um, and then obviously a generator. Um, you're not always going to have access to power. Um, and right. whether you do or don't, is that power um, sustainable? Is it, do you trust that power source? Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that this is not like a sponsored like <laughs> comment, but the Harbor Freight Predator generators have been proven time and again. Now, we've been trying to power Picotes Millers for years, and I think the consensus many times over is that those the quiet inverter-style uh, predator, predator generators from Harbor Freight have actually been yeah. pretty, pretty good. So. Yeah, if you have what a, that's worth. If you have a maxi, you need a Harbor Freight Predator inverter 3500, and it will change your <laughs> life. They run them very well. But you can run a full, you know, lining setup, your rollers yeah. and air conditioners and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. So Yeah, they work they work really well. Have a good generator that's reliable. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously trailer truck options, we talked about that. Um, pick one that fits you if you want to, you know, a full truck dedicated to lining or you know, drain cleaning and lining, whatever you want to do there. Um, you know, do a full truck or if you want a trailer, if you want to have, you know, a few different options that you can I can pull one trailer or the other with the same truck, trailer is the way to go. Um, and then, you know, you'll need whatever method of curing that you want. So um, we we use a few different methods. Um, ambient is the easiest um, and obviously the cheapest because it's just you let the epoxy cure uh, based on its cure time um, without any kind of really outside interaction. Um, but if you want to speed up those cure times, then you start looking at hot water curing, um, steam curing, UV curing. Um, those are all different methods that require different equipment. So think about how quickly you need liners to cure. Um, one of those main ones being if you are in a commercial setting, that's when it kind of seems like guys are really yeah. need those to cure quicker. Downtime is critical. Yeah. Yeah. So keep that in mind, you know, with your, the types of jobs and set the precedent beforehand, obviously. Mm. Um, that is so huge. If you let people know if if informed customers are happy customers in my mind. Yeah. So let them know there's no surprises. Um, and you know, think about that with your curing methods. Um, and then there's the very obvious, how much does it cost? That is a very loaded question. I love that question. Um, very loaded question, but the reality is you could start lining pipe for, you know, just with the equipment for like $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on, on where yeah. you're starting. I mean, yeah. the cannons what, like 24, 2500 yeah, bucks like that. Yeah. and you're shooting 25 foot of liner. Boom, yeah. right you can do 25 back. foot of four inch, 35 <clears throat> foot of three inch and like 50 feet of two inch Yeah, out of the, the bigger cannon, Yeah, which is the one I would get. And there's roller like roller options too. I mean, yeah. a cannon with the little the little smart roller, you know, um, that's like no brainer. I mean, it's really simple. You can 
like literally wet out in someone's garage or in the back of your van and go in and shoot a liner in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can start very small like that and, you know, be able to do smaller segments. Um, when you step into the inversion drums, there's a whole different world. There's, there's, there's a whole, you know, scale of inversion drums from small to large. Um, and you can spend, you know, either a small or a large amount on them. Um, but you know, for, for that question, how much does it cost? It really depends on what kind of installer you want to be and what kind of jobs you want to do. Um, you could spend anywhere from $3,000 to $300,000 and, you know, for the full, the full setup, I think, you know, we see a lot of guys come in here and spend, you know, 30, 35 and they're set. They're, I they're, mean, they're well set. set, you know, yeah. they've got, they've got really good long and short capabilities right. and, you know, can, can cure quickly and do all those types of things. So, um, you know, the days of the days of having to spend $150,000, just to get into lining. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's gone. And that's fine. I mean, if a guy says, look, I want to, I want to have everything I need on this truck ready to roll day one, you can hit the road, start doing jobs without having to, you know, adapt anymore as we move forward, then Mm -hmm. great. You know, we have the turnkey trucks and trailers, but, um, you know, I think it's John Thompson that called it, didn't he call it bootleg lining, bootleg lining. You know, you can do that. Um, and, and, you know, we've, we've seen that time and again, but even John, you know, he's, he's now built out a pretty, pretty sweet trailer, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so you're always going to want to grow into a more convenient, more, um, detail oriented process and a cleaner process, I think. So, um, you can either do it slowly, um, and baby step it or yeah, say, Hey, (laughs) I want that turnkey truck or trailer and that's fine too, but it's not necessary, I guess is the whole point of that. Yeah, and yeah, very true. And and I will caution you guys, you can start for cheap, but do not cut corners on your way there. Yeah. Don't you know the bootleg lining is, is one thing, but but don't ever go on a job site and not be prepared to to correct anything that goes wrong. If you don't have the materials or equipment that you need to fix some kind of problem that you may encounter in the process. Right. The risk, the risk isn't worth the reward yeah. in that case. Yeah. So get quality equipment and materials, um, but just just understand what you need and and have the tools you need on site. Because the difference in, well, you know, I was I was going to clean the pipe, but I didn't want to spend the money on a Picot sweeper, and even though it's a really fragile pipe, I just use chains. Well, then if you know if the chains blow the pipe apart, if they are too aggressive for that particular pipe. Yeah. That could have all been avoided just with right. the sweeper and, yeah. you know, e- easily pay for that in that scenario. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the same goes with, with the lining. Don't be underprepared. Um, be prepared, but know that you can get in it for um, a smaller amount that you may than you may expect. Well, and you have to have some other things in advance of that, right? I mean, you know, you need yeah. a camera. You need, I mean, we're just talking about the lining equipment at this point, but sure, leading yeah. up to that, you've got to have something to clean, prepare, inspect, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to line past connections, you've got a plan for that, you know, clean and inspect, do dry runs with your cutters, have the cutters, you know? Yeah. Um, be very diligent and thorough in your inspection. I think we talked about that in our last podcast, but, um, you know, if you've got connections and you line over them and you can't open those, and it's a critical, you know, kitchen drain or, you know, a floor drain in a commercial building that's critical, man, you're, you're not looking so good. And, and it could lead to a disaster, could lead to an excavation in a hallway or who knows what. So just really being smart, knowing that you have the right equipment, don't, you know, don't have a, don't have a black and white camera in a sink waste machine and be like, well, my next step is lining. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you're going to need a jetter <laughs> or access to one. You're going to need a better camera. You're going to need some, probably some high speed cleaning equipment and cutting equipment, things like that. So, um, Pri- you know. prime example was in a job in Arizona a week or two ago mm. under a hallway in a hospital, shot a liner, um, and went to go do reinstatements. And all the reinstatements were three inch T's in the wall with three nineties in the 45. That was all the reinstatements. Yeah, they were awesome. Yeah. Anyways, so um, 
you know, we had a mini miller sitting there. So, you know, went for it with the mini miller and, you know, was able to, was able to, to do it, but it took like a long time, you know, cause you just, you, it was, they were all like, like close to 20 feet out and you just don't have a lot of pushing power after that many bends. So, right. but they had a maxi. And so I grabbed the maxi and made it through in like 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, so the, the options, you know, the right. different cutters that come with the maxi and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So, whereas you can do it with one thing, does, you know, does that affect your downtime? You know, you got to think about those things ahead right. of time, but, you know, them having the right equipment on yeah. hand, right. I mean, changed everything. Yeah. So, and we don't, I mean, at the end of the day for us, it's, you know, we're very pro Picote, but we're not like, sure. that's all, you know, the end all be all. But if you've got some sort of high speed machine, be, be prepared. No, no. Just know you've got to have some options. So, yeah. yeah. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that about wraps it up. Um, if there's anything that we missed, if there's anything that you guys want us to touch on, specific questions about lining, let us know. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, um, we're on our cell phones. Um, yeah. Give text us a call, or, text us, email, whatever you guys need to do. Um, What's yeah. our website? www pipelinesuppliesusa.com or americanpipelinesuppliesusa.com either one they'll both take you there you can do that you can also go to draingear.com of course this is the drain gear podcast but uh, draingear.com is our online shop so if you needed any equipment or parts or pieces you can go there and buy right online try to make it easy for you guys yeah it's only going to get better yeah yeah, we've got new stuff coming. We're excited to show you guys new things, working on new methods, um, new equipment, stuff like that. And we're doing an audio podcast today because our studio is kind of being, we're kind of trying to re, revamp the studio. So hopefully next time it'll be a, another video video podcast, but this one's an audio. So hopefully you listen, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a good comment, give us a bad comment, whatever. We don't care. We got thick skin. Yeah, just don't say anything mean about me, though. Yeah, you're sensitive. <laughs> All right. Well. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. And we'll talk to you in the meantime. Yeah. Appreciate it. See ya. Yeah.